Hi, welcome to Mental Health Monologues. My name is Natalia. I'm a licensed clinical social worker in the Orange County area of California. I am really hoping that through this channel, I can provide you with some education and information on the social work and mental health fields. Um, this channel is not meant to be or replace therapeutic advice. So if any of the topics that I talk about in this channel are of interest to you and apply to you, please go ahead and take them back to the, whatever mental health professional you are working with to discuss it further with them. With that being said, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and so I would like to dedicate my first video to discussing about mental health and how to better care for yourself. Before we jump into my recommendations for caring for yourself or your mental health, let's just really understand and define mental health. There's these really great buzzwords coming all around us all the time, self-care and coping skills and mental well-being, and those are all great, but what does it mean? When we're talking about mental health, we're talking about your psychological, emotional, and your social well-being. And at its most basic, what that simply means is that we're talking about the way that you think, feel, and act. When things happen to us, it will impact the way that we think, feel, and act, and that is your mental health. Your mental health is being impacted by those things. So the purpose of having good self-care, coping skills, is so then when life happens, when things happen to us, we can bounce back and come back to hopefully a healthy and positive place in our life. And that is the purpose of having good mental health. Mental health issues are very common. One in five adults will experience a mental health issue in a given year. One in 20 will experience severe mental health issues. So on this more severe side of this spectrum, even though it's a smaller number, it's still a pretty big number considering one in 20. So mental health issues are very common. And so how do we make sure that if we are impacted or when we are impacted by mental health issues, how we can bounce back and come and be in a, a healthy and positive place in our lives? So let's go ahead and dive into some of my recommendations for caring for yourself and your mental health. My first recommendation is be genuine to who you are as a person. That sounds a little bit odd, but what I find a lot with clients is that we are always go to these, these, these different coping skills or strategies because it's what's kind of popular now. Um, a lot of things that are popular now that may work for some people but may not work for you are things like meditation or yoga or exercise or you know eating a certain diet and things like that. Those are all wonderful, but that doesn't mean that it works for everyone. And it also doesn't mean that you're gonna like it. So I always encourage clients, try it. If it doesn't work, toss it. If you like it, keep it. You should have a tool belt. You should have a lot of different things that will help you, not just one. So try them out. If it doesn't work, that's fine. There are a lot of things out there that can help you. For example, let's say you're a night owl. You know, the idea of being up before 10 a.m. and going to bed before 5 a.m is ridiculous to you. That's just how you are. So being genuine to yourself would say, don't try to get up at 5 a.m. to go exercise or to do that thing that you wanted to do because that's not genuine to who you are as a person. Be genuine to who you are as a person. Try different things out. It may not work for you. It may work for someone else and that's okay. You are a unique person and that is okay. Have your unique coping skills and self-care. That is okay. My second recommendation is be creative with your solutions. Not just now because we're in this pandemic and we've all had to adjust, but in general, be creative with your solutions. We, we have a lot of boxes in our life that says that things should be done this way, this way, and this way. As long as something is not hurting you or someone else, try it out, put a twist on it, that's fine. So for my third recommendation is to build a balanced life. Now, everyone says this work-life balance, you know, and all of these things, but how do you do that? I have come up with three Ps that I always share with my clients, and this is not based in any model, in any research. This is just something that I've done uh, to try to help clients conceptualize balancing life, okay? So the first P is purge, okay? Purge the negativity. We all take in a lot of negativity, whether that's negative situations or experiences, thoughts or feelings, we take those in and we hold them. When we hold negative emotions, they fester. And when things fester, they will come out, okay? I always tell my clients, 
you can bottle up your emotions, you can shove it into a corner and, and hope they don't come out, but emotions have a very ugly way of rearing their heads. And it will come out no matter how much you shove it off to the side or try to compartmentalize. That's just what happens. A lot of times it comes out in anger, irritability, anxiety, depression, sleeping issues. We see a lot of these different things when we don't purge that negativity. Okay, so how can you purge negativity? I have some people who journal, get it out of your system, take it out of your system. I have other people who exercise, physically exert yourself so that you can get rid of those things. We have people who will go and talk to a safe support. And when I say safe support, the reality is that we need to understand not everyone is a safe person in your life. We don't all have safe people in our life that will listen to us in a non-judgmental and safe way. We need to acknowledge these things. So who is your safe support system? Okay, so purging. Second thing is peace. We all need an anchor in our lives. We all need something to find our center, our purpose. It is a guiding force in our life. What is the peace in your life? Some people will turn to religion. Are you practicing in your faith? Are you turning to your religious texts? Are you practicing in your place of faith? What are you doing? Prayer is often one that I hear. Not everyone's religious and that's okay. I have people who turn to meditation because meditation centers you. I have other people who will go and connect with nature because nature connects them to the world at large. We have people who will go and volunteer because giving back to others helps people remind themselves that they're a citizen of the world, a citizen of their community, whatever. What is your purpose? What is your anchor in life? What is your peace? Passion, right? What are the things that feed your soul? What are the things that bring you joy and happiness? Are you engaging in your things? Are you, are you purging the negative and bringing in the positive? Okay. So purge, peace, passion. I encourage you to hopefully use these things as a way to find balance. You should be engaging in these things on a regular basis. Purge the negative. Make sure you have your center, your purpose and feed your soul, find your passions. So my fourth recommendation for caring for yourself and your mental health is to have a plan ahead of time. Trying to come up with a plan when we are in crisis or in a difficult situation is difficult, as you can imagine. So having some things already in at your disposal can help you get through a crisis situation um, much quicker than if you're scrambling to figure out how to help yourself. So I encourage people to have multiple layers of support, right? What are things that you can do by yourself? Um, what are some coping skills that you can have for yourself? What are some things that you can ask of others or do with others? Okay, remembering to reach out to your safe supports. Now you may not have safe supports in your life, but that doesn't mean that you can't have a community behind you. There are a lot of online, communities. There are a lot of so support groups that can help you with whatever challenge or needs that you have. In addition to that, you can seek professional help. There's a wide range of variety of professional help available to you. Like I mentioned before, support groups is usually led by a pr professional or what's called a paraprofessional. And a paraprofessional is someone who has um, a personal connection to that issue or that topic. And they have additional training to help them facilitate support groups typically. Okay. So, uh, a, a professional or a paraprofessional in support groups, hotlines, individuals at hotlines usually have training to help assist you through whatever crisis. Do you need a suicide hotline? Do you need a domestic violence hotline? What kind of hotline do you need? They're usually available to you either on a state or a national level. Therapy, making sure that you are seeing someone who is licensed. There's a lot of different licenses that allow people to do therapy, but make sure it's licensed. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I do provide therapy, but I also have colleagues who are licensed uh, marriage and family therapists. And there's other licenses as well that allow people to do therapy. Make sure someone's licensed or being supervised by someone who is licensed. At least in California, that is a requirement. And also, a lot of people have a lot of varying beliefs on medication and maybe consulting with a doctor or psychiatrist about medication. 
but if it's appropriate in your life, see if it's something that you can, that is available to you if you're needing that additional support. So if you are still looking for ways to find balance in your life, to, for coping skills, I've added some links in the description to maybe help you um, get creative in your solutions, be genuine to yourself, give you some ideas. And so all of that's going to be in the description. There are also a lot of movements. Again, I mentioned May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So there are a lot of organizations who are dedicated to shedding light on mental health and mental illness who are doing a lot of campaigns. For example, NAMI, a lot of people say it differently, but I say NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness has a campaign uh, that a campaign, I'm sorry, that is You Are Not Alone, the You Are Not Alone campaign. And so again, their, their link is below if you would like to read a little bit more about that campaign. Um, there's also Each Mind Matters, which again is a movement that is dedicated to shedding light on the topic of mental illness and mental health. Some of you may have heard of the Semicolon Project. This is not necessarily backed by um, a, any type of agency or anything like that, but it is a movement that started several years ago um, to bring awareness to mental health issues, to suicide awareness and prevention. And the idea being that a semicolon represents that the sentence isn't done. And so the idea behind this is that a lot of people have gotten up tattoos or things like that to represent their support of uh, mental health awareness or to indicate that they have had their own struggles with mental illness or suicide and that they're still around, they're still here, their story is still going. And it's a wonderful um, movement that was started a few years ago. In addition to that, there are a lot of resources. I already mentioned NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, um, but there's also resources like Psychology Today that has wonderful um, articles um, and even connection to therapists in your area if that is something that you are interested in. Um, that is a resource that you can go to. You can also get connected to communities online, as I mentioned before. One of those can be uh, The Mighty Mind, who dedicates themselves to sharing um, others' experiences with mental illness or mental health issues and, and sharing their stories and how they have overcome that, providing facts and articles on, on mental health issues and whatnot. So that is it for me today. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Please subscribe if you would like to hear more about the mental health and social work fields. Um, if you have any questions or would like for me to talk about anything in particular, I'd love to hear from you and you can leave a comment below. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Live your passions, love your journey, and I will see you next time. Bye.